Good afternoon, guys. Uh, as some of you may already know, I have made this um, contemporary bracelet. Uh, this design is from Kate McGinnon. I will leave a link to how I figured this out underneath the video for you, if you like it. It's 3D beading, and the only thing that she didn't do was, of course, put the Swarovskis on there. I did that myself, but I can't show you how this is done. This is copyrighted by Kate, but what I, but what I want to teach you today is how to do the diagonal peyote stitch. So we're going to do that, and we're going to zigzag it. And uh, the good thing is that Kate has no copyright on the diagonal peyote. But these designs are hers, so I can't explain how to do this. Um, if you like uh, this kind of beadwork, then um, you can also. Uh, look for Kate McKinnon on uh, the internet and you will find that she has some very beautiful books. Um, I don't have any of them so I figured it out this out basically by just that little tidbit video and um, uh, maybe you'll be able to do the same. So anyway, diagonal peyote. Now we're going to do of course give that a little bit of a 3D dimension so we're going to use three colors. My first one is a dark brown and it's actually bronze DB022 and as you can see I always get packages from different people see these come from Weerwerkale which is a Dutch company I don't know where these came from but uh, they came from somewhere um, my second color is galvanized champagne and I think this is galvanized bronze probably or maybe it's just called bronze I don't know you'll have to look it up and my third color is going to be black. And this is just your regular shiny jet black that I'm going to be using. I'm also going to be using Fireline 0 0.006. And uh, if you're smart, you'll get one at the fishing store. Fireline Crystal. This is actually a little smaller than the this is actually 0 0.05 because they didn't have 0 0.06 but uh, I'm happy with that works just the same don't feel the difference but uh, use 0 0.06 because it's a little stronger and uh, yeah that's what I actually prefer so out of necessity 0 0.05 for me um, start with about two arm spans wide of your fire line you don't have to use wax, but I've noticed that it makes a lot of difference. It's easier to run the thread through. And uh, if I make a mistake and I need to get my thread out, it doesn't damage that easily. So, um, yeah, I've become a big fan of the wax. Two arm spans wide. For me, that's now already 20 cents. We're not even going to make it with uh, two arm spans wide. But um, it's a start. I don't want to do like five arm spins white right now. So, put my beads out of camera frame. I hope I won't be burning so much. And there's no sunshine, so I hope this video won't be too overlit. And I really have to say, I can't wait to get to my new place. So, I got a room with one window, and uh, my videos will be perfect again because this is way too overlit. Too much light in this room. Can anybody ever complain about too much light? Yes, when you make a video. The setup begins with four colors black. One, two, three, four. Ten times color one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's a C bead. Ten times. Color two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now, according to what you want and what size wrist you are, you either set up um, ten if you got my size wrist, or eleven if you got a little bigger uh, hands or that area where that needs to come over than I do. Uh, but Either way, even if you do 10, um, 
one size will fit all. It just might not be as wide as this, okay? So that's something that you need to consider. So I suggest you set up either 10 or 11 of these and then pause me now and get back to me when you're done. Now, the first part is very important and remember it correctly. Turn these beads on your finger. Make sure you got that end tilt down there too. Just turn them on, turn them around, and make sure that you get a good grip of those first beads. Hold them like this. Now, the first thing is pick up a black delica, and you pick up a champagne delica, and you go into that very first bead. And just hold that tension on there while you pull that thread through. And make sure that that black delica doesn't go to the other side. So it needs to stay on your left side. Okay, very important. The also very important about this project is, and, and this is not really a beginner's tutorial, is that you stay on the right side of the beads. And it doesn't matter, matter really if you do that when you uh, do a bezel, but in this case it's very very important that your thread stays on the right side. You don't want it to twist and tangle, you don't want it to twist around, you need a nice flat zigzag peyote, especially that first round, very important. Pick up number three, skip a bead, go into the next bead, and it's just your basic peyote right now, straight line, and you will have to redo the tension every now and again to hold that tight. Pick up number four, skip a beat, go into the next, and now we got number five, skip a beat, go into the next. Now we're going to create our first zig. And we do that by skipping two beads, that is a galvanized and a bronze. And we're going to go into the brown. Don't add any beads. And pull that tight. And that's why it's so important to have tension on there. you got to reposition the first beads, make them stand up to get a good clean curve in there. So, when you put the second one in, you can pull it even tighter and it will stay in position, but you need to put tension on there. It's very hard to hold it. Skip a bead, go into the next. those beads in position. Put them up. And you can see that nice curve there, right there. And it's very important you try and keep that nice curve in there. As I said, it's not a beginner's project. It's going to take some time. But let's continue. Pick up one, and basically, you've got five beads every time you put in between there. So that's number two. Number three. And here we're twisting. I'm gonna make sure that I'm still on that right side. Yep, still on that right side. Number four. 
and this can be confusing because the number five goes into the black bead so just make sure you keep counting those that you got five edit this is number five and now if you have to you can reposition these again try and get them in the right correct position you like and then pull that tight again so now it looks good now it's exactly the way I want it and tension tension it's very important picking up two black going into the next black so we're not skipping pull that through these beads also need to go into that perfect angle and it's very hard to do that you just gotta go and just turn that around and just hold that closely just kind of close these two up pick up your color wand again skip a black bead go into the galvanized champagne and hold it tight don't let it slip pick up another one, skip one and go into the next one, that's number two and you get that nice edge in there that you want pick up another one and after two are done you can easily go through there because when once you have two through this is pretty tight and you can just reposition it a little bit the way you want it make sure it's nice and like that and we got three and now I can let go I feel pretty confident that will stay where it is I got four and I got five staying on the right side very important very important so there's a couple of things you have to remember about this one stay on the right side and it might happen that by accident you go through and you go underneath the thread and you will notice that because it will twist and turn so now we're going to skip that's that's one of the things that you need to remember stay on the right side if you go underneath it just take out some beads find where you went underneath it where you twisted around it so that you get back to that perfect flat position and number two is skipping two beads going into the next to create that angle that's one of the second second things that's the second thing you need to remember because you know you're easily inclined when you do five of these to put another one in between there or start with a brown one I've been there done that and staying on the right side so you're kind of working on the inside of this when you go up and on the outside when you go down towards and do the blacks pull that tight keep that nice tension on there and you might have to reposition, uh, reposition your beads on your fingers now and then so I did one two and next third thing that you need to remember is you always do five see there it wants to twist to that left side I'm not gonna let it keeping it on the right side three four and one two three four and five is on the black one five and then the fourth thing that you need to remember is that when you add the two delicas here you do not skip a beat but you go into the next beat got a nice one there just a little just a little bit more pull a little harder there one two and they don't skip a beat they go into the next beat 
but now I need to just put that tension on there again. So I'm going to take that out for a bit. Because I want to make sure that the threads are all tight when I do this. So pull that through. Position that. And already give it that angle so it's easier to work with. Skip a black bead, go into the next galvanized, and one more skip, number two, and number three. And now I feel good enough. I know this is not going to move anymore, so I can position that a little bit if I still need to, but it looks good now. And we're going to go do four. And five. And we need to Skip the two and go in the other direction again. And it helps to just kind of make sure that your um, delicas already go in that direction. So just twist and turn with it. One. And careful, 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 because these are the things that can make it f just fly out of your hands. Two. Three. Four, and five, black in, and now I got a little knot here that I need to get out, and make sure you do those and don't be stubborn and just try and pull it through, because that just makes things worse. Put that tension on there. Give it that direction already. Put them next to each other. One and two. A little bit more tension. A little tighter. Sometimes it's hard to find the right position to hold your beads in. But as long as you can do it tight and already give that position that you want with the black ones, you should be doing good too. So, after three you're safe, pretty much. One. and three and now I can just kind of looks pretty good though right just a, like a just needed a little notch okay four
and five. And then skip it. Two beats. And make that turn. And what I, what the best thing really is to do is like, after three, just kind of reposition these and pull your th thread. And then, because it's hard to do when, you, you know, when there's nothing there to keep that tension on there yet. And when you've got three beads in there, they will make sure that you get the tension that you need. So that's one, two, and three, and just checking now, yeah, they could use a little bit more of an angle, gotta make sure that those are good, and then pull, and that's it, that's the way it works, and I think you got it now, so just go to the end of your thread, finish all your triangles, and I will show you how to attach both ends to each other. Now I just finished up my last five bronze bead. I got two more beads at my end tail. Put everything out uh, and make sure that the black beads are on the inside and that you're pointing towards that last angle like here. I put my last five bronze on there but what I forgot was that I already put one black here, so I'm taking off one black at the end, picking up my end tail, and now I'm gonna go into the galvanized champagne, I'm going back in the black, and I'm going into that first of the black that is still loose there. So now I got my angle. I'm picking up my working thread again, putting that on my needle, and I'm now going to add, get that end tail out of the way, add my two blacks and I'm going in there and I'm stepping up. Okay? So here's my step up. And that's very important to step up or else you're, if you don't do the step up, everything's gonna be lopsided. And then you're just gonna continue. One. Two. three, and that's correct, you should be doing four because number five is right here, so that's four, that down for a second. I'm going to go get my end tail again and make sure that that's nice and secure. And it comes out of that one, so that goes right across in that one. And I'm going to pick up those two, the black and the bronze, middle bronze. I'm going to pick up the outside bronze. I'm going to turn back in all three of them, so that's two bronze and one black. And I'm going to leave my tail here. Now, the importance of the tail is don't work it away, because wherever your tail is, is your step up. So you're going to go step up along the road uh, a little further, but always make sure that when you bump into this end tail you will see that you're closing in on your step up. 
Now, the next little trick is you might see a little bit too much thread here where you didn't go tight enough. So what you do to correct that is you just pick up both sides and you put them together and with the next turn you're gonna go in like this. It's a little hard going backwards but you're gonna go in like this. Keep that tension on there. Hold that tight and then add one two hold it tight, it's hard, it's difficult yes I know, but it will look perfect so even if you screwed up a little bit in the previous row it's gonna look very good and three and when you put three in you're okay to let it go. It will look like this and it will show you that it's nice and tight. Let me show you that on the side. Uh, if you see that. It's not opening up that far. So this is nice and tight. You got everything taken care of and you can still pull it like that if you want to. And you can add two more. And you can do the same thing here by folding that double to get those beads to go immediately into the correct position. Pick up two. And then it won't be so hard to correct them. You can just correct them a little bit like this. And then again. One, two, three. And you just basically need this for the next row that you're going to be doing. Look how nice and tight and you don't see thread. See how gorgeous that looks? Perfect. And um, you, you basically only have to do this for this row, but you can do it for as many rows as you like until that bracelet fits. And uh, as you can see, my bracelet is still pretty big. Uh, but as you do more rows, it will get tighter. So it's very important that you keep that tension in the corners because uh, that's how your bracelet gets smaller and that's what you want. You want your bracelet to fit, right? So basically everybody fits this. So everybody could have a bracelet already with like a three row angle but now you gotta make it fit your size and the best thing to do that is just to fold that double when you get to that end, turn back Hold the tension on there at one, two, and number three. Now again, you need five, except where you step up, that's where you use four. So, going adding two more. One, two, going into the black one. Folding that double. And adding two, positioning them perfectly, hopefully. Just put that up there a little bit like that. And one, two, oh, hold on to them. And sometimes. 
sometimes you just need to regrip, but that's okay. As long as you got that turn already made. Three. And then when you got that nice pull in there, you know it's perfect. So, I suggest you do round three. Keep an eye on the stepping up area. And um, I think I will do the step ups in pictures because then you can pause it until you get there and uh, watch where the next step up should be. So guys, just pause me now until you get to your step up. Okay, adding a new thread. I'm coming out here. I'm going to make sure that um, I come out of the same bead first before I do anything crazy. So, um, because I want to be able to find out where I left off, of course. So I'm going up diagonally. To come out of that same bead. And once that new thread is in there, and you will have to check how long it, uh, you will need it and how you're doing with the fitting, because I'm getting uh, pretty close to be it being tight already. I think maybe one more row. Um, but after I added my new thread, now I'm going to work away my old thread and the end tail of the new thread. I'm not going to touch the end tail of the first thread because I always want to be able to find where I started. So uh, and that would be the easiest way. So picking up my end tail and as most of you know I don't do any knots in my work if I don't have to. And uh, I hope you didn't do any knots in your work along the way either. So here we go. That's my new thread. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go through the beads and I'm just going to go up and down a couple of times to make sure that that thread is nice and tight and not going anywhere. doesn't look good so I'm gonna take that out it doesn't really matter how you do it it's just uh, just go down a couple and then go make a turn and go back up just to make sure that that last thread is secured Turning back here, I guess. And going down a couple. And then I'm just gonna cut that off. I'm going to do the same thing with my end tail to make sure that that thread won't move anymore when I put my next bead on the new thread. So, going up here, going up two more, turning back, going down a couple, test. Nope, that won't move anymore, so now I'm gonna cut off this thread. And it looks nice, and there's no knots in there, and uh, yeah, that's the way I do it. So, now just continue until you put enough beads on there. I'm getting pretty tight here already, so this is my last row. And I will show you how to finish up the last part. Since you don't have a stepping up, you might be a little bit 
confused on uh, how to end up your thread. I did my last step up right here and now I'm going to add 15-0 gold and 11-0 gold and that means we have to go around in the previous row to get to where we want to add the seed beads. These are round ones, these are not delicates that I'm going to be adding. So making the outside a little stronger by ha having to go around in those in that last row again so you just pick up two to get to the top. I'm blurring again. There. So, going around in two, and I just got enough thread to go all the way around, so that's good. Going into the black. And then here's where I'm going to add my 11-0. And I'm going two down. And I'm just going to continue my route until I get to the middle. See, this project takes up a lot of time. This is uh, the third day I'm working on it. Um, day before yesterday, I went to go see Zina. We did a video together. Uh, don't know if you'll be able to follow it though, but um, yeah, we had lots of fun. And um, hold on, I pick up that last one, and this is where I add my 15 0, and I turn back up in that one. Because you see, those last ones are not connected, so this is this is how I connect them. Oh, and now I go back up again and I try not to get stuck but it just you just can't help it picking up two two and two and one and adding that size 11 again going two and I rather go down so I just pick up one and then I pick up two that's easier and it will keep your beads where they're supposed to be. Two, one, and a size 50 now again. and I'm just going to do that all the way around so I should just you pause me now until you get to the end so I'm right back where I started now I'm gonna go through the 11 0 again and I'm just going to take my thread down and work it away into the project and then I'm just gonna cut that off. 
Now, if all thread, you still have plenty of thread on that end too. And now we need to make a turn back. Why? Because if I would work on this side, I would get my little seat bead right on this side and it needs to be on the other side. So we need to turn back with the end tail and first we're going to go up one black because we can't go into this black, that's where the seat bead needs to go to 15 0 and we're going to go up two more or one more And then we're going to turn back. And we're going to go up, up, up. And we're going to pick it up from here. And we're just going to do what we did on the other side. So, but then in this case, the 11-0 comes here on this point, and the 15 goes in between the black ones. So this is where I put the 11 -0. And here is the 15 0. And we're just going to do that all the way around also on this side. So I suggest you pause me until you've done that round two. Okay, I'm all done. And it looks gorgeous. Now, how many hours did I work on there? On that? Zoom that out a little bit. That's about 10 hours of work and losing a lot of sleep. Now, there's no way that this is worth a hundred dollars. Mm, not even 50. Even if I would charge five dollars an hour, I don't think I can do it. So what we need to do is we need to pimp it up to make to give it value and to make it at least, well, I think sixty dollars worth of. So here's the quick fix. Get out your wildfire. Take about an arm spin and a half, just to be on the safe side. And we're not counting beads anymore now. Um, as in this, or counting thread, because it's just, you know, there's just too much time in there. And you can't say, well, I paid $5 for these beads, and let me add their eight arm spins of fire line in there and that's 80 cents and then let me add another 50 cents for the wildfire I'm adding. It's just not adding up. So um, you need to make it look like it's worth at least $60. So we're going to do that right now. And for this we need 4 millimeter Swarovskis and I got two colors. I got a smoke to pass and I got a light smoke to pass. So I got two colors of four millimeter bicones. And what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to work my way up with this wildfire. I'm just gonna go in randomly because I need to come out in this bead later. And I'm going to take half the thread to work my way up. So make sure you got half. That half will be on the bottom and half will be on the top. So got, let me see if I'm on half. And just, there we go. That's half. And now I'm going to work my way up to the top with my needle and make sure that 
the thread that you got here doesn't move anymore. I'm going to take this brown row, that's like the second brown row, to work your way up. But it doesn't really matter which row you work your way up, as long as you come out of this black bead and go into this 11-0 seed bead. So, working the way up, it's going to take a bit. I'm going to do them one by one because I don't, at this point, of course, don't want to... Um, break my uh, delicas because, oh, that would make me really pissed. Working my way up one by one. And an arm span and a half is really, really nice because like with one pull you can get your thread through. And that's so much fun. It's better than having to do that two or three times. I waxed my uh, wildfire, by the way. Just uh, don't know if, I, if you noticed that or saw that or heard that. Just adding that bit of information there. So, at the top right now, pushing two, through to two, brown, black, black and into the seat bead. I also got some 15 O's black shiny ones that I'm going to use. Uh, on the light side I'm going to use the dark topazes, the smoked ones. So I'm going to pick up a smoked, a black 15 O a smoked, a black 15 0 and a smoked. And I'm going into this gold galvanized 15 0 And when I go up, I'm on the dark side, I'm going to pick up a light topaz, a black 15 0 another light topaz, a black 15 0 and another light topaz. And I'm going into that 11-0. And that's what it looks like. And it's absolutely stunning. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So again, smoked. 15-0. Smoked. 15-0. Smoked. 15 0 light to pass 15 0 light to pass 11 0 so I suggest you do the same if you want to that is uh, and um, yeah work your way all around make sure that that stays on top there and that doesn't go to the bottom so, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to do it all the way around and then I'll work on this side. So, pause me now and I'll see you back in a minute. After I finished my last row, I now, I thought I might as well explain it, I'm working away my wildfire like I worked away my fire line. Just in case you were wondering, like, oh, what, what do I do when I'm done? Well, basically, you go into the seat bead. Um, and uh, start working away your wildfire. So when you're done with one side and you worked away your wildfire in the Delica beads, you now need to do the other side and you need to make that turn again to stay on the correct side. And just go up. towards your and I waxed my thread and all the wax is all over the place but I guess I'll live and just get to that
seat beat size 11 O to do the same on this side. So here we start again with the uh, four millimeters smoked, the 15 O's, and put it right in there. So I suggest you make the other side and then work away your thread and basically you're done. So that basically is the bracelet. Uh, I decided to go through the um, bygones in the size 15O again, making sure that that is nice and tight and you know you can never go through there enough. And then I added a little pico of three beads on there. All right here. So let me get that out of the way and let me show you how I'm doing that. Just in case you don't know that yet. I go in. I add two black ones, 15 0 go in again. I go up in the first one and I'm going to add one more 15 0 go down and then into the 11 0 the gold one and then I'm gonna go down thought it would be a nice touch And you can also actually do that on this side, but might want to use gold because uh, of the black here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do that, give that a little bit more um, romantic touch to it, and uh, a better edge. So, that's how that looks. And I'll probably be going through there again, adding two beads to connect the four millimeters to the little pico. So to, to make that like a fluent flow there. So, but you know, that's all optional. And um, yeah, basically the bracelet was finished until I had to decide I wanted to spend a little bit more time on that like it didn't cost enough yet already I guess so but you know it's all fun and uh, sometimes a design just gets more designed when you thought you were done a little bit more uh, along the way while you're at it so um, but this is basically it guys I hope you enjoyed it um, I also wanted to oh yeah I wanted to say it. I got the oh, beats in a jar contest going uh, these are the beats all packed and all counted and um, yep so far nobody has been able to Tell the correct amount of beads that are here. So the correct amount is not guessed yet, so you can still have a guess for a dollar on the fundraising for the Quantum Leap Convention page. Uh, and if you don't know what that's about, um, I'll leave you the link for that video underneath this video also. And maybe you want to have a go. Uh, one guess is one dollar and you might be able to win all these beads if you... Um, guess the right amount so I would say just go through all those guesses there in the comment section and uh, have a look at what you think you might have the right amount so um, yeah but oh and oh 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 before I forget I wanted to show you what I did with Xena this is my pendant I made with Xena so uh, after this video goes up I will be working on this video 
So uh, yeah, that's it guys. And uh, the next video will be with Zena and me. And I tell you, we had a blast. We had so much fun. Um, the video is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be done by me. And then you will have to um, go to Sina's channel to see part two. If you can still follow it though. Uh, I mean, there was so much noise. Uh, little Noah, Zina's uh, son, he, he really liked my name. So he kept saying my name over and over like a thousand times. And I kept going, yes Noah, yes Noah, yes Noah. <laughs> but yeah, he, he was making a little bit of a, a lot of noise. And... Um, but he was cute and adorable, so uh, he's forgiven. Next time, uh, we might do this again. Uh, well, we're going to do this again. Even if you didn't enjoy seeing us work together, because basically I don't think you, you'll be able to follow much of what we're doing. But um, next time, Zina has promised she would come to me. And by that time, I'll be in my other house and it will be much more quiet. So, um, yeah, if it's a success, we'll be doing it twice a year. And, uh, well, maybe in time, you know, we can go visit the, the other beaters, you know. I would love to do a video like that with uh, Jessica or with the Sidonia or with uh, Alicia or, you know, with Kelly. I would love to do that. Although, I don't know if anybody else would be up to doing something like this. Uh, well, maybe Summerlee would be up for it or... Uh, Carla might be up for it, you know. It would be fun to to uh, make these videos and just kind of connect with the other beaters. Because uh, I think there's like, we're totally disconnected from each other. The only ones that are truly connected are what I feel is like me and Zena. And I uh, got a lot of contact also with Jessica. So, um, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's time to just kind of connect. Touch each other and, and make a video together and... You know, I had so much fun with Zina. It was so much fun. So, uh, well, who knows what the future will bring. Uh, it will start with Zina and me. We'll be pioneers. So, bye guys. I'll see you in the next video.